Hello YouTubers, it's Alan. This is part two of my two videos about fears that I had before transition and whether those fears came true. So this part is about mental or social related fears. So I'll just jump into it. Um, one fear that I had is that if I were to go on testosterone, I might end up feeling sort of foreign to myself. Like I would look at myself and think, oh, this is weird. I feel alienated from my body. Or that I might look in the mirror and like not recognize myself. Um, there's one video that I remember seeing that a trans guy made and said that he, well, I'm not sure what pronouns they use, but that he went off of tea because he started to not recognize himself in the mirror. Um, but that has not happened to me at all. In fact, it's the contrary. I feel much better about my body and my appearance now. It feels much more natural and fitting to me. And, um, you know, when I look at photos of me pre-T, I just feel like, whoa, that is so weird. Like, I'm surprised that I was as sane as I was pre-T because it just seems so unfitting for me pre-T. Um, and another fear that I had is that I might have difficulty dating, difficulty finding people to date. And has that come true? Well, not really. I mean, I don't know that I have a whole lot to compare it to because for the last, like, what, nine years or something before transitioning, I was in a relationship with someone that I ended up marrying, so I wasn't, like, dating pre-T, except for a long time ago. Um, well, we were broken up for a little while, and I did kind of date someone then, and... Anyway, um, if I could sum it up, I would say... I mean, yes, of course, dating or finding people to date is complicated when you're trans. It can be hard, unless you just sort of coincidentally meet somebody that you happen to hit it off with, which can happen. I mean, that certainly happened to me before I started transition. And, you know, I was the same person then. Um, you know, like, even before transition, I needed to find somebody to be with who, well, a woman, who liked somebody who, someone like me, who looked really masculine or even sort of male in some ways, but who had female attributes, certainly physical, because, you know, I still have attributes that would be called female physically, and also kind of a little bit psychologically, or maybe just in terms of how I was raised, like, uh, my socialization was as a female, obviously. So my point here is that I'm kind of the same person for the most part now. So in that sense, it's not like I'm looking for different types of women to date now than I did before. <coughs> I mean, now I kind of more need to find somebody to date who identifies as maybe more towards bisexual than I did before. Because before, well, I was going to say just then that I, I would just look for lesbian women to date, but what ended up happening is that the most significant people that I had significant relationships with or significant connections with they happen to be women who identified as queer or bisexual, which are the exact same that would work for me to date now, you know? So, 
Um, <laughs> I'm saying a lot about this. Like, this could obviously be its own video, so I should probably stop talking about it. Um, I'm not dating anybody right now. I, I took a long break from trying to find people to date, and now I'm doing a little bit of online dating, but I haven't actually gone on a date recently. Um, but, you know, I get the impression that there's certainly possibilities in the world, so I'm not... I'm certainly very far from hopeless. Anyway, let me move on. So, certainly, like pretty much everybody else, I had fears about coming out as trans to family, friends, co-workers, and I made videos about that in the past, um, so if you want all the details, you can take a look at those videos. Uh, my coming out went really well, uh, very thankfully, I did not have any particularly negative experiences with coming out. I was not rejected by anybody, so I count my blessings for that. I know that a lot of people do have much worse experiences with coming out, as we all know, but I think there are a lot of cases when it's not as bad as you might even expect. I've seen a lot of that with experiences of my friends or people that I watch on YouTube. Um, so you might be surprised, at least with certain people that you come out with, come out to. Um, and other things. So I did fear that if I were to transition, it might cause problems with my marriage or end my marriage. And so my marriage did end, but that was not directly because of transition. That was for a different reason that I don't want to get into talking about because it involves someone else, my ex-wife, and I don't want to blab about something that involves another person. Um, but my wife was very supportive. Um, as I mentioned before, she did date trans men a really long time ago before we got together. She identified as queer rather than lesbian. Um, so, well, you might think, well, so then why did I even fear it? Well, I feared problems with my marriage because she had expressed some fears when I would talk about my feelings about gender. Like, she feared that I would have some kind of personality change, something like that. Um, so then her fears made me fear how she would react if I did decide to transition. But it was actually okay. Of course, you know, if you're with somebody who feels that they're not attracted to the gender that you are becoming physically, then, of course, that could be more complicated. But what I would say about any of these fears is that being able to really be yourself, to be your true self, feels so good. It feels so good to an extent that you might not even be able to imagine or understand if you haven't experienced it yet. That's how it was for me. So I think that benefit makes it worth facing these fears. It makes it even worth losing certain things because it's, it's just such an amazing result. To be yourself. So, um, another fear related to other people that I had was the fear that it might be hard to make friends as a trans person, and particularly that it might be harder to make women friends, because I've always had almost entirely women friends, and I really enjoy that, and it's really meaningful for me, and it just feels very fitting. To have women friends. So I have made new friends since I started to transition. I mean, I moved to a new town one year ago, which was one year into my physical transition. So I was faced with the prospect of having to make new friends, and I have made some. Um, through work, I've become really good friends with a cisgender man, 
and I'm out to him. I was out to him from the beginning of our friendship because I just had an intuition that that would be okay, and it was. So I'm thankful for that friendship. It's it's fun to have a guy friend. Um, and I think me transitioning and embracing myself makes it easier or more possible for me to be friends with guys because pre-transition, before I had sorted through my feelings and gained an understanding of my feelings and my identity, and before I had gained an acceptance of myself as a guy, I was so jealous of guys, consciously or subconsciously. I, um, I had a lot of negativity towards guys before I got to the point where I understood and accepted myself. Um, you know, it was sort of a, what would you call it? Well, maybe a little bitterness, jealousy, those kinds of things. Um, but now that I've accepted myself, and especially since I'm on tea and have had certain mental and emotional changes, subtle ones, but I just have a much better understanding of other guys, or I feel like I can relate to them much better than I could before. So that makes it easier to be friends with guys, and it's fun. I, I enjoy it. It works well. Um, and, you know, it's always good to have friends that you're friends with for reasons other than you actually uh, want to get it on with them. Because... <laughs> I had so commonly made women friends in the past that part of the reason I was friends with them and enjoyed spending time with them was that I kind of had a crush on them. So it's always nice to not have that complication, right? Um, and I, I have been able to make some women friends. Like, one new woman friend I have is someone that I started out dating, but excuse me, then we just ended up being friends, so that can happen if you're both on the same page. Um, and then at work, I've made a small amount of women friends, not particularly close ones, at least not yet, but I'm starting to get to know a couple of women from work a little bit better, and... Um, so I think if I kind of act properly, um, you know, keep things, keep the proper distance so that, so that they don't think I'm like hitting on them, uh, then I think it can work out. I say that because I think the dynamic between male and female friends, like a man being friends with a woman, I think that dynamic is sometimes a bit different well, that might be an understatement, than the dynamic between women friends. So I'm, in the past, I was used to the dynamic of women friends, like women and women friends. But now I have to be aware that other people perceive me differently, so I have to approach the friendship a bit differently. And again, this is a thing that I could totally make a whole video about, so I should probably just stop there. Um, okay. Um, I had another fear, which was not being recognized by other people as LGBT, like, not being recognized by other queer people. Now, this was not as big a deal to me as it is to some trans guys or trans people that I've talked to or heard about, because, um... And again, this is a thing that I could make a whole other video. I probably should just not go into depth about it and only go into depth about it if I make a whole other video about it, right? Um, let me just say, clearly, I am really not recognized right off the bat by other people as being part of the LGBT community. So sometimes that is frustrating if I want to be noticed or acknowledged as part of that community without actually telling them explicitly that I'm trans, which sometimes I do. So that's one option. Um, 
or, or I'll try to have just little signs. Like I have a water bottle where I have a human rights campaign sticker on it. You know, the blue square with the yellow equals sign. So I try to do stuff like that. Um, but it, that's not a huge deal for me, really. And there are ways of dealing with it, as I've just said. Um, another fear that I had was being dependent on medication, testosterone. Um, I've heard a lot of people mention that fear, and, um, it does make me worried a little bit when I think about things like, oh, global warming, and what if there's some global, like, meltdown, you know, the apocalypse, if there's some horrible disaster, like in the movie The Day After Tomorrow, I think it's called, but that's probably not really realistic, at least not that huge of a disaster. Um, and, um, well, another thing that could happen is that my affordable health care could get taken away if a Republican becomes president, which would be horrible because I would probably not be able to afford certain aspects of health care, which I think is a travesty. Um, but, you know, well, but it's fine for now. Let me just call it a day and say that. It's, it's perfectly fine for the time being. And testosterone isn't as exorbitantly expensive as some medications, like, I think for me, for the type of testosterone that I get, you know, the injectable, it's, if you paid out of pocket, it would be like a hundred something, somewhere around a hundred dollars, give or take, I think. It's been a while since I've heard the price. And so for me, that lasts over six months. So that's not as horrible as some other medications that I've heard of. Anyway, um, oh, and I, sh I could also mention, in case you're wondering, the needles, the syringes, are really, really cheap. Like, a few cents per needle, so that's not a big deal for me anyway. Um, just a couple more. Uh, so, one thing that some people fear, or that their friends or family fear for them, is personality change, and I never really feared that because I just had this, I, like, enough self-knowledge or something that I was confident in the fact that it's like my personality is deeply rooted and it's not like it's just going to change overnight, and it's not like I'm going to try to follow the stupid um, gender roles for men, like, you have to be tough, you can't cry, you can't watch Absolutely Fabulous. Like, pff, I don't buy into that crap. So I'm not going to change that much. So I didn't really fear that, and I have not had those, like, large personality changes that some people fear. I don't think that happens with most people, unless they're sort of young and impressionable and get wrapped up in being macho asshole or something. Um, the last thing I could mention is that I maybe feared a tiny bit becoming emotionally flat or emotionally numb because testosterone is known for, you know, making it hard to cry and stuff like that. I haven't really felt that. I mean, I, I definitely don't cry as easily as I did pre-T, but I am nowhere near being emotionally flat or numb. I feel like my emotional state is sort of correct for me, correct for my being. I feel more steady, more calm emotionally, less emotionally tormented and tortured <laughs> than I did on estrogen. That was quite horrible. Um, so I, I just feel fine emotionally. I feel like my emotional, like capacity or changeability or lack thereof is quite comfortable and fitting. So there's that. Um, so I'll bring this to a close. Thank you for watching. Bye.